Oh my goodness, that was so beautiful. I, I, when Jackson was singing uh, Choose Love, I was like, trust love, trust love, because you are love. And the whole idea of trust is to trust yourself, your, your personality self that's been conditioned to be your lovely aspect forward facing to humanity, and the higher self, which uh, always speaks and comforts and is our voice when we ask it to be. So very, very beautiful. I loved it. It totally fits the talk very, very well. But first, I do uh, have a little something for you. Have you heard about the preacher that likes to visit elderly people? No. Well, this preacher went to visit one of his elderly congregational members, and he sat on the couch, and he noticed a big, large bowl of peanuts on the coffee table. He said, do you mind if I have a few? And she said, no, not at all. Go ahead. They chatted for an hour, and as the preacher stands to leave, he realizes he didn't just eat a few, he ate the whole bowl. <laughs> and she said, he said, I'm terribly sorry for eating all of your peanuts. I really just meant to eat a few. And the woman replied, oh, that's all right. Ever since I lost my teeth, all I can do is suck the chocolate off of them. <laughs> I knew that would get you. <laughs> and you can trust that. Next time you're looking at a bowl of, bowl of peanuts, you're going to see if the person giving them to you has tea. <laughs> uh, we are talking about trust today and the paradox of trust. And, um, you know, that when we have a belief, we, we absolutely trust who we are. And, you know, what brought this uh, particular talk about was I was watching a video on Instagram course, you know, and a lady was standing up in front of Bashar, and she said, I just don't trust anybody, and he said in his voice, well, that's absolutely not true, and she said, no, I really don't, I have trust issues, I was raised to not trust, and he goes, no, you, you trust, you trust that you have trust issues, <laughs> and I thought, what a great talk, that we, where we put our attention is normally on our beliefs, and when we believe something, we are trusting it. And we can't really approach from curious when we are trusting that we know everything or we know what's going on. I know I'm personally guilty of something. You know, if, so, if I'm irritated about something, I'll say, well, I knew that. I knew that. I knew they were going to do that. And my husband's gotten very good at going, did you? <laughs> No, I didn't, but my conditioning says that's what rises first, <laughs> flight, <laughs> fright, or flee. Um, you know, because I was raised with a, a lot of um, beautiful things, like I said when, when we opened, but I was also raised to be very suspicious. And I have been really examining my belief systems and really looking at integrating the whole and uh, understanding that the different aspects of myself were there to protect me. They were there because something was done and I formulated a strategy to never have to go through that again. And we typically do that unconsciously, and sometimes we can do it consciously. But when you're young, uh, you know, when something happens, some, somebody yells at you, or you're, you're, you know, you're told, uh, do that, and you don't really want to do it, you, when people send you messaging, whether it be parents or teachers, you know, we're exposed to a whole world of people with different opinions and ideas than our own. And so we begin to trust that we have the answers, and that trust is a protection mechanism. Because really, the idea of trust is made from the mind, because when you recognize who you are and you start to traverse the inner journey path, you realize trust is not something that isn't needed anymore, because when you open up from the heart, uh, everything that is happening is seen as necessary, and there is no personal uh, attachment to it, right? I, I was meeting with my teacher this week, and he said, Tracy, there's nothing to take personally. And I'm like, but it sure feels like there is, <laughs> right? And he, I, I was like, I, I just noticed that when things go wrong, my immediate is like, hmm, for me, against me, 
with me, without me, like what's going on here? And I recognized in that moment had nothing to do with the scenario uh, that was, that I felt I was being challenged with. What I recognized is what arose in me to meet that scenario and it it did not allow me to hear anything else that was going on because I immediately went, you know? And I recently uh, saw Inside Out 2 for the second time because, uh, you know, I had another child in my house. (laughs) Someone told me I had a rotating door for children. I do. (laughs) But it's closed now for the summer. Um, But we went and I was watching this uh, again and I, I felt myself uh, understanding that when these emotions arise, we don't typically give them a name. We don't really go, oh, anxiety is here to visit, hello, (laughs) right? We don't recognize the action with the emotion, or at least I didn't. I didn't recognize that I had put joy way deep down inside and really wasn't letting her out because when I was joyful, you were told to sit down and be quiet. Uh, do what you're told. Stop making so much noise. I'm trying to work, you know. And all of these messaging tells Joy to take a hike. So when you're little, you're like, but I just want to have fun. And so, you know, recently with lots of kids around my house, I felt my mother coming up. And uh, I have learned to trust this, you know, like uh, they're running around, riding the bike around the living room. And I'm like, can you please stop riding the bike? My nerves my nerves. And so we we start to see that uh, we all have ways of meeting discord in our life. And we begin to trust that. And we don't really know where joy went or bliss. Uh, we, We recognize it when it comes up if you're looking at a beautiful flower or you have a moment of stillness or you're taking the journey uh, on the on the inner work. And uh, when I'm looking at little Esty's face, I don't know, my heart just bursts open with so much joy watching her try to figure out how to crawl or walk or, um, you know, and if she goes too far, then anxiety shows up. Nope, come back this way, you're gonna get hurt. And so what I recognize is that all of the emotions of the human experience, none of them are wrong. They're all here and have served us in a great way. But when we trust one over the others, it creates an out of balance situation for your human experience. So in the movie, Anxiety Ran the Show. And you know, this little girl, if, I'm sorry if I'm ruining it for you, but you will still find something in it if you go. Um, but this little girl was uh, transitioning to puberty and to teenager, and she was a hockey player, and she wanted to fit in. And all of those <laughs> stories came back to my mind of, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to do that again. It was hard and uncomfortable. And it, you know, I was a kind of a odd child, and I am still an odd adult. It's okay, I can admit it. <laughs> but one of the things that I learned was, um, you know, to me, life was hard. I can, I started to remember my life a little bit in the movie, and I was thinking, you know, I, I was sad a lot, and I. Um, you know, my mom just didn't quite know what to do with me. And she was always saying things like, you're beautiful because God's beautiful. And, you know, she would say these things that really are wonderful to children. But if you do not identify what the child's feeling, it's so hard to help them. And so as a child, you begin to trust what you feel, not what you see. And of course, belief systems to children are very similar to adults. They're operating without our knowledge. And it, the only way we be- can, can begin to see See how we are navigating the world and what we are trusting is to stop. Is to stop and say, hmm, I'm curious. What am I trusting in this situation? What really is beckoning to be called forward in this conversation or situation or where we can feel the tension rise up within us? And how do we begin to change the trust? When someone declares, I don't trust anymore, they are paradoxically, paradoxically, yeah, you know the word, paradoxically placing trust in the very statement. You then lose the idea of the situation or the surroundings. And this shows us that we are, li- that, that this shows us that the trust. It, It's just not about relying on others. It also extends to our beliefs and our assertions about life and people and situations. 
we begin to trust the negative over the positive. We begin to trust this isn't safe over love. We begin to keep it all in and navigate the world and it reinforces our fear that the world is not a safe place. How do we know the world isn't a safe place if we're always moving from that conditioning and we never identify this beauty and this bliss that these beautiful uh, enlightened teachers are telling us about? I don't know about you, but I am very curious about that and every now and then I get glimpses of it. But my reinforcement or my conditioning or the direction of my mind always goes back to safety. And I want to move from a different space. I want to move from the beauty of life. I want to move that from that space that, yes, things happen. One of our beautiful teachers, Catherine Economou, um, had a 10-year battle with breast cancer. She just got the news that she passed, and you know she stepped away from teaching to spend time with her daughter that just graduated from high school. And it reminded me that this will end. She was quite young, a little bit older than me, and it will end, and we need to live like it's gonna end. Instead of living in the safe nucleus of, the, of our ego, we need to learn, and that's why you're here. You wouldn't be attracted to this type of energy if you weren't here to want to open your heart to what is and to meet it and see what it has for you, what needs to be released and surrendered to the beloved. When I, I have this, uh, one of my many teachers, who is now not on the spiritual scene anymore, but his name was Atreya Thomas, and he said, you know, the quickest way to connect is to sit and let your stomach just fall. Like, stop walking around with, oh, tucked in, you know? You just, you just open it, like, unbuckle your belt, just let your belly fall, put the tongue on the roof of your mouth, and just open up and just feel. It is the quickest way to your highest uh, truth and the reflection of you. Ernest Holmes says this, life is a mirror and it will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. This underscores the importance of examining and transforming our beliefs as though, because those sh thoughts shape our reality. Nobody else shapes your reality. They're responding to it. I heard uh, this uh, recently, and someone said that the universe doesn't give you what you want, it gives you who you are. Your vibration attracts to you the life that you are living. And there is no fault, shame, blame, guilt in that. Once we get to, huh, I created that, and I trusted it, now I can open to a new way of being. By examining our beliefs, we learn to overcome our trust issues and we reclaim our personal freedom. We must critically examine, ooh, sorry, our underlying beliefs. And we, you know, on a uh, you know, week like this, moving into the 4th of July where we celebrate our independence, the independence I want from you is your own inner personal independence to meet life when it comes full force and it will with grace, with your highest self with the beauty and the bliss. And if it calls for you to cry, then cry. And if it calls for you to be angry, then be angry. And if it calls for you to be anxious, then be anxious. But then let's look at it, see which one of those you have a tendency to stay at, what your orientation towards life is, and then be honest about it. I was sharing with someone that, uh, you know, when, when I feel someone's coming at me or I, I feel unsafe, I have a tendency to recoil and feel small. And I thought, this is worth examining. And I, I really looked at it all week long. What, what does that mean? And this person said to me, uh, you know, being, feeling small, Tracy, isn't bad. And in that moment, because I was vulnerable enough to have this conversation, I realized I trusted that feeling small is bad. And because I trusted it, I recoiled from it, and then I wanted to project my feelings onto the other person. And what happened when I realized, oh, feeling small isn't bad, it's telling me something that I need to do, set a boundary. I need to speak my truth. I need to be authentic. I need to open up and share what is really going on inside of me so that I can let go of those things that I've trusted in my life to keep me safe and step into vulnerable 
Ooh, that's scary, stepping into vulnerable. You know, the word vulnerable just freaks me out all the way around, right? Because to me, it gives you a shot. To my personality, that gives you a shot at me. And this goes back to trust, right? I am learning to trust the divine within me that I was born with a seed. How could I not be? Everything on this planet was born with what it needs. You can't say that the acorn isn't born with the, uh, the, the idea that it's going to be a tree or that a cat and its DNA isn't going to be a tabby or the cocoon and the butterfly. We trust that because we see it. We know when we see a caterpillar, we say, oh, isn't that so beautiful? The divine made that so it can transform. Well, why would the divine leave you out? That's what we need to trust. The divine hasn't left you out. You have left you out by trusting the messages that were thrust upon you in innocence. But now it's time to challenge the beliefs. Ask whether they are truly reflecting the reality that is trying to show itself to you for your path forward or are they distorted perceptions based on safety. Are there instances where trust was rewarded as positive or negative? I knew when I grew up, you know, we got the messaging, just be honest, and if you're honest, you know, you won't get in trouble. <laughs> oh, mm. uh, you know, that's what my mind says, right? Like, mm, okay, sure. Because when you're honest, I could see my mother very much wanting to honor that messaging, but you could see the temperature rising, you know. Yes, I hid my homework in my backpack. Uh, and so we begin to uh, shift our perspective when we work on it. We begin to uh, lose the distrust and open ourselves to approaching from curious. Now, I do acknowledge that not everyone we meet is trustworthy because they have learned the same thing you did, right? They've learned this as a safety mechanism. So we do have to uh, step into reality and use our discernment and our wisdom. And when we trust that, right? Because how could we not trust it? Because it's who we are. And so when we lose our reactive uh, outward projection, the natural arising of discernment, the natural rising of love, because that's what you are, the natural rising will see the energy that is in front of you and you won't be comfortable in that person's presence. And then you'll lose the blame. You'll see, oh, you're just moving from your pain and I get to move away from your pain, right? We get to make this choice. Holmes said that the universe is impersonal. It gives us a like, it gives a like to all. It is no respecter of persons. It values each alike. What we draw from it, we draw through the channel of our own mind. Everything you are experiencing, first of all, let me just step back. This statement really does emphasize that what we receive from the universe is a reflection of our inner beliefs. And you can challenge that because really, uh, if you truly are here and you've taken classes, you know that your beliefs form your life. And I used to run around going, well, what do I believe? What do I believe? And my minister would say, it doesn't matter, you're living it. And you know, I had this idea that if I went back and I knew where it came from and I knew what my mom said and I knew what this person did, that I could, oh, blame them escape a little. But what it really allows me to do is forgive them. It allows me to be authentic. It allows me to do my inner work. And then the trust that I'm talking about, different than the trust I extend to you that you're going to show up if we have a lunch date or that you're going to show up for work on time or that you're going to be in integrity with your words. The trust I'm talking about rises up and it secures you in your position with the world that the personality self that has uh, worked to so hard to protect you gets to fall away. And we get to use it when we need it, driving, you know, at work, when we have things to do. But in the other moments, we get to just let out that sigh and surrender and embrace the vulnerability. It allows yourself to be truly what is required to meet whatever instance is in front of you, whether it be a person, a place, a thing, a fear. But the trustworthiness of your own self demonstrates your willingness to trust that life created you with everything you need to blossom into exactly 
what you were designed to be. And yes, we get off track, right? But the off-trackness is really just about our mind. We all traverse what we need in this life for the journey back to our highest self. And if something is going on, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's an energetic call for us to look within. And I don't know about you, but it's easy to blame because looking in can be kind of painful. But what I have really put my attention on is why did you respond that way? Without self-blame, right? Write it down. Why did you respond that way? What could you have done differently? How would you like that to go next time? And can you send forgiveness through the ethers? Or even if maybe it was an overjoyous uh, thing that, that needed truth and honesty. Maybe it's a people-pleasing situation. You know, I began to trust people-pleasing, and I heard recently that people-pleasing is a currency that is way too high of a price to pay. Because you lose all of your vulnerability, all of your authenticity, and you are becoming what other people need for a myriad of reasons. The highest reason is fear of rejection. Who wants to be rejected? Nobody. But the idea of when you learn to trust yourself and that seed that's planted in you, the fear of rejection falls away. And then you get to meet yourself and life. And the natural inclination of that is the bliss and the joy that we so deeply know who we, that that's who we are. And now, as we start to look at the uh, issues that arise within our personality self, we get to meet them gently and kindly. And when we say to the divine, please bring me what I need to heal this, I can feel it in my bones, I can feel it in my jaw, I can feel it when I tense up, I can feel that there's a lie, an error in thinking. And I want to lose that error and replace it with the highest truth and embody it as my own. And the truth is, you were born with everything that you need. The truth is, doing the inner work reveals a totally different outer experience. Embracing the vulnerability allows yourself to be vulnerable. True trust requires this. It requires opening up and giving others the opportunity to show you their trustworthiness and demonstrate your willingness in relationship to display all the things that we show up here for to live our highest and best life from the highest and best plane. And at the end of the movie, all of the emotions recognize that none of them can be excluded. That they all, that joy couldn't exclude anxiety. Joy alone made a mess, anxiety alone made a mess, embarrassment alone made a mess. But together, the honoring that all of them are there, like a guidance system in their suit, to help them navigate this planet that we're on, and that when the, you trust the suit, you trust the guidance system, the wiring, the electronics, you become very grateful for it, and out comes what is needed to meet every situation. So in conclusion, you know, by recognizing the paradox of trust issues, examining and challenging our beliefs, aligning with our highest self, we overcome the limitations that inhibit our personal inner freedom. Trust is a journey of self-discovery and alignment. And as we cultivate it, we open to a more liberated and fulfilling life. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Liberated and fulfilling life. Who doesn't want to be liberated from that which, you know, I, I, when I say that, I feel like this thing that wraps around me. And every time I look, it just opens up. And then this is the result of looking is that stance of freedom and joy and bliss. And you let it out. And we, we stop suppressing and we start, start honoring. This is a significant step towards this, this personal freedom. And as you leave here today, I encourage you to reflect on your own trust. What are you trusting today? Where are you putting your attention? 
and giving credence to it like it is right or wrong. Nothing is right or wrong. You make it right or wrong by your belief system. When we get out of right or wrong and we step into, let me see, we step into, share with me your opinion, we step into, uh, help me to understand, there we can meet one another and take steps towards transforming ourselves and being that light, that light that chooses love to all that we meet and draw them onto us and be a source of strength and freedom for yourself, your family, your community, your country, your nation, and the world. This is what I truly believe Ernest Holmes was trying to share with us. And this is the message for today. Namaste. And we are going to anchor that in prayer. Mm. I just know that there is only one. There's one beingness seen as duplicity. And each thing that is birthed into this beautiful experience we call humanity or kingdoms, they're all born with the perfect thing. And when we have that error in thinking, there is always that person to come, that person, place, or thing that comes, that agitates us a little bit and shakes us up. It's a design to show you, hey, you're walking the wrong way. And in this prayer, I am saying that I know for myself and for you that that seed has been planted in your heart and mind today to become hyper-aware, self-aware of who we are in everything that we do and asking ourselves the question, is this who I want to be? Is this what I wish to express? What needs to be released in order for me to be the truth of that seed that has followed me all of my life, waiting to be watered waiting to be nourished, waiting to be believed in, waiting to open. And as we step into the inner work, we are watering it, we are nourishing it, and it is here just waiting for itself to be revealed through you. And I know this truth, I know it is happening because we are looking at it, I know it is done because we've put it into the ethers, and I know that the divine presence is in this building, in this place, and it is the accumulative consciousness of this center, and I love that truth and I trust it. And I release these words knowing the perfection of all love is here and now. And so it is. <laughs>